we've been talking about you know cultures blending and cultures clashing what happened in 1977 in England was that the West Indian community had reggae music and the white kids like us were bored with progressive rock and people playing really fast and singing about elves and wizards and we wanted something that was about you know about our real lives and that's that's, that's been an enduring thing for me and the Mekon's going to be 30 years old this year which is kind of shocking but um the one thread that goes right back to those days is that idea of making music and uh, that really relates and engages real life that isn't an escapist entertainment or a fantasy thing. And uh, I've tried to, with painting and with the, with the music and the social activism, to sort of blur all those things. We were right, right from the start, I don't even really remember how we got into it. We were in, involved in a, a tour for the Rock Against Racism campaign which was a great campaign that started off in England because an idiot like Eric Clapton got up on stage and said, you know, it's taken his whole career from the blues and made like some racist, racist remarks at a, a big gig. He was drunk and he claimed he didn't mean it, but you know what, he said it in a public forum and it was appalling to people. So the Rock Against Racism tour was when bands like The Ruts and Misty and Roots went out and toured together and shared equipment, you know, and at that time as well, a lot of women came into it as well. There was bands that were just women. Women weren't just the singers. Women became, you know, became like the, the instrumentalists. It wasn't unusual to have women in bands anymore. It wasn't commented on. We've always had women in the Mekons, you know, playing fundamental roles in the band, not, you know, just up the front to look good or something ridiculous. Um, and as I've moved on, I've moved to Chicago and I took up painting again. And uh, again, it's just, you know, we, we've always found ourselves in positions where we've, we've, the social activism wasn't like we decided to do it, it just kind of was forced, up, you know, not forced upon us, but it was, we were just in that situation. I was, we did a lot of stuff. For, I made an album which was great of punk rockers singing Johnny Cash songs uh, for an AIDS charity, and uh, Johnny Cash was really into that. He loved it, which was nice. Um, then we made, uh, most recently we've been doing stuff work, because I mean, I say I moved to Chicago and I, I do believe in the power of music that Vicky was talking about, it's beyond language. And it was a kind of a shock to me to come to such a segregated city. And I was talking to Adam earlier about the, the Polish community in Chicago, you know, and they're a very huge, it's a huge Polish community, but it's very, it's very enclosed and it's kind of very conservative and quite racist. And, and then there's like a big Mexican community and you know, I've, I have a lot of contact with the Mexican community, but not on a cultural level particularly, you know. Uh, in my daily life, I meet these people, but, and it was very strange that those barriers existed. And, you know, on the south side of Chicago, you know, there's, there's all this music that's going, it's the music I love that I listened to and I grew up with, and, you know, that, that blues music that's so important, that, you know, to, to everyone, you know, to, I mean, country and western music in America would be nothing without the blues, you know. Hank, they think of it as like this white conservative music and it's Hank Williams, you know, took it from the blues. Jimmy Rogers took it from the blues. Elvis, you know. As Tavis said on his show recently, Elvis Presley, you know, he, he was playing the blues. And um, we've, we've tried to find ways to just blur those lines and try and get across the artificial barriers that people put up. I mean, I, I'm talking about the music business, I'm talking about politicians, I'm talking about people who want to put things in boxes. You know, that there's black music, there's soul music, there's... Um, we've always tried to skirt over that and, you know, try and find ways to... I mean, the last campaign I was really actively involved in was the campaign um, against the death penalty in Illinois. And um, there was a moratorium put in place and that was, it was a really great way for musicians to get involved because we just gave money, you know? We played gigs, we gave money. We didn't come out with bad, big messages, big global messages about this and that, and uh, pl you know, promote our own product. And I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a problem to me with the way music and social activism works, and I think it has to be at the grassroots, and it has to engage people, and it has to show people that they can make a contribution. Sorry, I'll shut up now. <laughs>